Oh, bye guys. Well, after two days of good God, wet bulb temperature here in the collapse of global industrial civilization up here at Bugs in a Jar Farm, finally we have some relief and it has turned into a blissfully cool, rainy summer day. It is Friday afternoon. June 7th, 2023, I believe, and I finally got all of these clueless morons out of here, and now I have another crowd coming in. I'm hoping I'm going to be able to sneak a rant in. Uh, <laughs> I should be able to hear them drive up. Uh, so while I have been dealing with the 4th of July throngs at my vacation retreat. What has been on the minds of Rhett Butler and the boys and girls at mongabay.com Since it is Friday, it is a Friday, July 7th, we're going to dive into the this week's ecological meltdown roundup rant. Check in with Mongabay and uh, I'm glad to see that red is climbing on the bright green Y bandwagon that finally Rhett Butler is waking up to the fact of this uh, bullshit green revolution. So here is a tie to the Amazon rainforest. Obviously Rhett's going to be looking for bright green lies in the Amazon and uh, this is how we're going to turn the Amazon rainforest into a giant cornfield to save the planet from fossil fuels. Climate emergency may channel millions in resources, meaning financial resources, toward corn-based ethanol in the Amazon, huh? An agribusiness magnate from the U.S. who is already the biggest producer of corn based ethanol in Brazil now plans to leverage, quote, green investments from governments and banks to meet negative carbon emissions pledges using an unproven method, meaning you know, knocking down a rainforest to plant corn to grow ethanol to save the planet. Uh, his company is trying to implement in the Brazilian state of Mato Grosso a copy of his U.S. Midwest Carbon Project, an initiative that plans to capture 12 million tons of carbon in ethanol plants and store them in North Dakota below ground. Even though the company alleges that it is rigorously controlling the environmental practices of its corn suppliers in Brazil, an investigation found that the local executives are themselves connected to illegal deforestation in Mato Grosso. There you go. So this is how these green investments from governments and banks, the uh, banksters behind it all, handing out all of this money how to save the planet. So from green ethanol to green nickel, green nickel, talking about all the nickel that needs to be mined and processed to make these save the planet batteries as we ramp up nickel mining by about a thousand percent. How do you think all of this nickel mining and processing, what is literally fueling that, if your answer was burning coal to mine and process green nickel to save the planet, give yourself a green star. Indonesia's coal burning 
hits record high, and green nickel is largely why. Hmm. Indonesia burned 33% more coal in 2022 than the year before, contributing to a 20% increase in the country's carbon emissions from fossil fuels. This will likely catapult Indonesia to become the world's sixth highest fossil fuel CO2 emitter. This rise in coal burning aligns with efforts to boost economic recovery following the corona panic, including a slate of new coal-fired power plants that recently came online, as well as the expansion of the nickel industry. Huh. Industrial parks that are home to smelting, processing nickel and other metals consume 15% of the country's coal power output. So this is just one of the many, many, many bright green lies uh, behind all of this unadulterated horseshit. Uh, switch over, you know, to your electric cars and lawnmowers and everything else. Uh, who do you, what do you think is, uh, is powering the mines and the smelters? And, and then to get the nickel to market. It is fossil fuels. Uh, and, and I'm going to take a wild guess that all of this uh, CO2 emissions coming from the mining and smelting and transportation uh, and manufacture of all of this shit, nickel, copper, cobalt, and of course lithium is nowhere factored in to the carbon output of this. All they look at uh, is the final phase. Uh, when, when you do an honest accounting, it's more and more uh, coming to my attention that this green revolution actually uh, will uh, produce more CO2 uh, th than if we just stick with the damn fossil fuels. It's frying pan and the fire, guys. Okay, you are being scammed. Okay, I am not a lobbyist for the fossil fuel industry. Fossil fuels are the fire which will kill this planet. The green revolution is the frying pan that will kill this planet. This planet is doomed. There is one way to reduce uh, all these emissions and all the environmental damage caused by all of this mining, that is to reduce the number of humans on this planet, preferably to zero. Someone who is never born has a carbon environmental footprint of zero. Okay, but good for Rhett for joining the uh, bright green lie catalog. Okay, so what's going on off the coast of Brazil? Brazil claims record shark fin bust nearly 29 tons from 10,000 sharks seized. Brazilian authorities announced the seizure of almost 29 tons of shark fins, exposing the extent of what they described as illegal fishing in the country. <coughs> the previous record for the largest seizure reportedly took place in Hong Kong in 2020, when authorities confiscated 28 tons of shark fin. So, extrapolating out uh, this is a, approximately 10,000 
uh, sharks that were butchered to make shark fin soup for rich Asians. You know, they, they, they get the sharks, they slice off their fin, and they just throw the rest of the animal back. Uh, anyway, uh, a lot of hopium uh, this week, which obviously we're going to skip over the hopium. I can swear we've already heard this story, or it's probably uh, from another country. Let's go over to Indonesia, where we find nearly 85% of Indonesian peatlands are not protected. A recently published study shows that less than 16% of Indonesia's 6.7 million hectares, otherwise known as 16.5 million acres of peatlands, are protected. And of course, that's if you actually swallow the bright green lie of protected areas, which apparently uh, Rhett Butler is still swallowing. Uh, anyway, if you actually consider them to be protected, that leaves um, 4.2 million hectares or 10.4 million acres of peatland as being in need of restoration, uh, which is much higher than the Indonesian government's target. Do you think so? About 11% of global peatlands are in the tropics, with an estimated 54% of those in Indonesia concentrated in Sumatra, Borneo, and Papua. Okay, what is going on with Peru's river dolphins? I am actually quite shocked to hear that uh, in 2023 there are any river dolphins still left in the entire country of Peru. Uh, when I was down there in 2009, they were pretty well tolling, you know, tolling the death knell for the Peruvian river dolphin, which you can kiss goodbye. Uh, fishing, dams, and dredging close in on Peru's river dolphins. Amazon river dolphins in Peru are facing increasing threats from human activity, including fishing, proposed construction of dams, and dredging operations. Um, a new study tracking the movements of dolphins in relation to fishing areas, dams, and dredging sites found that 89% of the dolphins' home range is being subjected to fishing activity. The construction of the Amazon Waterway aimed at improving naviga navigability along waterways in Peru involves dredging rivers, uh, dredging across four main rivers in the Amazon basin and could lead to ship collisions with dolphins, increased underwater noise, and further habitat destruction. Hmm. Do you think so? Okay, I think this is the only question we have in Manga Bay this week. Okay, class, how much have you learned here from these rants? The question today is, can Spain keep the rising sea from washing away a critical delta? The answer to the question is no, Spain cannot. The government plans to bolster the delta uh, you know, by bringing in so, so the the sea's rising, washing away all of the sediment, which is what a delta is, is, is sediment being brought. So the rivers bring in the sediment, the waves wash it away, and so what are they doing? They're trucking in 
sediment to his exposed outer banks, but this is a stopgap measure until researchers can develop a more sustainable long-term solution. The question is, can they find one in time? And the answer to that question is no. You could keep that delta and about 90% of the deltas on the <coughs> on the planet. <coughs> Goodbye. <coughs> and it. All right. I'm going to, uh, we have some hopium as South Africa gets ready to purge bird-eating mice from key albatross breeding island. There you go. Uh, okay, what is Joko Widodo? We haven't heard from... Indonesian President Joko Widodo is warning officials to anticipate risks from the first El Nino since the 2015 Southeast Asia wildfires crisis. Uh, dry season conditions have emerged in 52% of Indonesian territory this year. Uh, we will see what that means. Okay, more hopium, hopium. Okay, guys, you will not believe this. See, this again, you know, every week I, I say this, that this is the reason. You guys probably wonder why Sam keeps going with this Manga Bay Roundup rant when nobody on the planet, including <clears throat> Doomers, has any interest in hearing it. Well, it, it's this reason, because without uh, Rhett's, you know, penetrating uh, ability to analyze, to observe and to analyze, uh, I would never be able to figure this out by myself. So I personally want to thank Rhett Butler for helping me to understand how the world works. So now you need to be sitting down and, 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 and c turn off the cute cat videos and pay attention to this story. Report links paper giant to Indonesian deforestation despite pledges. A new investigative report alleges that the supply chain of one of the world's largest producers of wood pulp, of wood pulp and products, Royal Golden Eagle Corporation, is tainted, is tainted with wood from deforestation in Indonesia. The allegation. Huh. The allegation that one of the world's biggest wood pulp uh, producers on the planet is tainted with deforestation uh, comes despite, despite the company having adopted a no deforestation policy since 2015. Eight years, eight years, the one of the world's biggest wood pulp corporations has had a no deforestation policy in Indonesia. Huh. The report reveals a chain of offshore shell companies pointing to RGE's control of a new mega scale pulp mill in Indonesia. This new mill alone threatens large-scale deforestation once it is in operation due to its huge demand for wood. Yep, 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 yeah. 
Okay, I think we already covered this story, I'm pretty sure, about how Bangladesh, how Bangladesh is ramping up its freshwater fish, its freshwater fisheries to aid in its food security. Yes. Okay. I'm not even going to get into this guest editorial on blue carbon deserves a green light for the climate fight. Don't even want to go there. Uh, my computer is doing something weird. Uh, la, 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 la. Where were we? So I just had my buddy uh, Jeremy Jimenez report from Madagascar. When was it? Uh, last week Jeremy was over here. We were sitting right here. And he was telling us how the baobab trees in uh, Madagascar are seem to be the only species of tree doing okay in Madagascar. Here we go. Fire imperils Madagascar's baobabs. There you go. Uh, the This uh, forest home to six endemic species of baobab trees, the Kindimite forest is facing increasing anthropogenic pressure, especially from bush fires, says this fire researcher. The pressure on the, you know, the baobab forest will continue to increase as long as the people in Madagascar remain poor. Okay, so as long as we're over there in Africa, just the, you know, each week they do these little mini stories from Sub-Saharan Africa. Okay. In southeastern Nigeria, anger rises as shell pipeline contaminates river and farms. And, that, and then over there in Ghana, activists call for new mining legislation to be scrapped as Ghana's government grants license to mine for gold in a protected forest reserve. Yes. What's going on? I did not realize there were crocodiles in Nepal. And was not aware of that. But uh, it doesn't look like there's going to be crocodiles uh, long. They just pulled another one out of Nepal's Chitwan National Park and tangled in a fishing net and hook. Okay, let's go over to Fiji, looking at marine reserves. Study finds locally managed marine areas in Fiji yield mixed results. A study found that Fijian communities engaged in the country's locally managed marine areas networks exhibited strengths in the mechanisms such as community participation in decision-making and financial support. However, the report also found that the villages did not necessarily experience improved, improved economic well-being, wealth, food security, or even better ecological outcomes for marine resources they were managing. Here's one from the clueless morons in Sri Lanka attempting to rescue leopard cubs. Leopard mothers often hide their cubs when they're going out hunting or in the process of re relo relocation and in Sri Lanka 
workers on tea estates often pick up these cubs assuming they are either abandoned or lost picking up a leopard cub i remember one time i uh i was just wanted to help this mother raccoon move her babies and so she was carrying so there there, there was this one little baby left i mean this thing was this big it was the it was the size of Sancho's head. This absolutely adorable little uh, raccoon cub that I was just going to carry over and put in the new nest. I reached down. I picked that little SOB. I reached down like this to get that little adorable ball of fluff. Put it in my bare hands. Good Lord how I didn't fall off the roof. I have no idea. Anyway... Uh, but we are going to, uh, let's just, let's do two more, uh, two more, since I realize I'm talking to myself. Tangled in marine debris, skate egg, skates are like stingrays, uh, tangled in marine debris, skate egg cases dry up and die on Peruvian beaches. A new study has found that short tail fan skates may be being affected by plastic pollution. The skates mistake abandoned fishing nets and other debris for seaweed and attach their eggs to them unaware. These fish are unaware that the debris could wash up on the shore where the eggs will dry out, but uh, we do have an answer. And we finally have some hopium. We're going to wind up with some hopium. You know, I've, I've been reading all of this crap about these bacteria and these whatevers uh, eating plastic waste. But I'm thinking, how can we ever scale up? Uh, we, we need to get bigger than a microbe. Well, here we go. Finally, we have a solution to the plastic waste problem, maybe this can can save the uh, the skates in uh, in Peru. Nepal's rhinos are eating plastic waste. All right, we're going to get the rhinos in Nepal to uh, eat uh, 300 billion tons of plastic waste. We just need more rhinos to eat the plastic waste. A study found plastic waste in the dung of one-horned rhinos were back in Nepal's Chitwan National Park, which could harm their health and survival. The plastic waste comes from the rivers that flood the park during monsoon season as well as from visitors who litter the park. And there you go. I think uh, they should listen to this and get the government to implement sustainable waste management plans in Nepal to protect the rhinos which are a vulnerable species. But anyway, guys, now that I have uh, done my doomer duty for the day, uh, I see the rain is starting again, it looks like. But I need to wind this up and get back to being a super host at... Uh, my vacation rental business as the new weekend crowd bears down on Bugs in a Jar Farm. Get out there and enjoy uh, whatever you can enjoy while you still can. My eyes. Oh, man, looking like Ireland in uh, July. 
I can hear that creek. Can you hear that creek rushing down there? The pond is filled up to the top. But the uh, fireflies have collapsed, as I have mentioned. We have had a 95% collapse in the lightning bug firefly population at bugs in a jar. There will not be any lightning bugs in the jar this year. I have no idea what's going on with the lightning bugs. It is a sad state of affairs on the 4th of July in the Finger Lakes of New York. Bye, guys.